Men of Galilee, why gaze in wonder at this heavens? This Jesus, whom you see ascending into heaven, will return as you saw him go. Alleluia. Forty days after our Lord's resurrection, we celebrate today his ascension, his returning to God the Father in heaven. This Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Daniel Carr. And together with us present at Mass here in the church this morning, I know Our Lady of Lourdes School are also joining us remotely for the celebration of Holy Mass today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where he the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote all about what Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving the instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After suffering, he presented himself to them, gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my gift my father promised, which you will have heard me speak about. For John, baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. They gathered round him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes unto you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and, you will, and to the end of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them from his sight. They were looking so intently up into the sky, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you see him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. The response is, Alleluia. For all you people, clap your hands. Shout your God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King all over the earth. Alleluia. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy. The Lord, amid tr trumpet blasts, sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. Alleluia. 
Alleluia. For God, all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Go, make disciples of all the nations. I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus showed himself to the eleven and said to them, Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news to all creation. He who believes and is baptised will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. These are the signs that will be associated with believers. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will have the gift of tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands and be unharmed should they drink deadly poison, they will lay their hands on the sick, who will recover. And so the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven. There, at the right hand of God, he took his place, while they, going out, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and conferring the word by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. If you type images of the ascension of the Lord into a search engine, you'll discover the most amazing variety of ways that artists have depicted the moment and the mystery that we celebrate today, from frescoes of Jesus being swept up into the heavens while angels and apostles look on, to quaint depictions of our Lord's feet disappearing through the clouds. All of this in an attempt to help us to have some idea of what happened on this day, which isn't like some idea we might have from an episode of Doctor Who, or a rocket going up into the skies. But as with all of the mysteries of our Lord's life, when we try to depict them in our human way, we fall drastically short, because our human condition makes everything appear rather limited in terms of the mysteries of our faith. What is happening, at the ascension of Jesus, is that he is entering into another reality. Now, we might perhaps wonder, we might imagine what Jesus was doing in those 40 days between his resurrection and today. How was he living those 40 days? What was his relationship like, for example, with the apostles during that time? One of the very early popes, Pope Leo the Great says in a sermon for this feast, During these days, the fear of the horror of death was taken away, and the immortality of the body as well as the soul was made known. During these days, the Lord breathed on his apostles and filled them with the Holy Spirit. And to Peter, more than the other apostles, he entrusted the care of the Lord's sheepfold, having already entrusted him the keys of the kingdom. Well, although we no longer see Jesus' physical person here on earth, he remains mysteriously, but really and truly with us, above all, in the Blessed Eucharist. And this is the great benefit, really, of the ascension 
for us. He is gone, but he remains with us. And this sacrament of the Blessed Eucharist, the Holy Mass, is the means whereby he remains with us even though he has returned to heaven. Because the Eucharist isn't some kind of keepsake that he's left us, but it's his very self in the form of a sacrament, a sign that's tangible and perceptible to our senses. When we come to Holy Mass, whenever we pray before the tabernacle, we know that he is here with us. And it's this realization of his continuing presence that gives us the courage to go on with life on earth. Knowing that he's gone into this reality of heaven, that we can still experience this proximity to him on earth. And that's why all our time spent before the Blessed Sacrament, our time spent here at Mass, is not just simply time spent well, it is a foretaste of our own time in heaven. And this is the essence of our faith, not just words on a page, it's not a biography about a personality in history, but it's a real person that we touch and see through signs and symbols which convey the very life of God himself to us. And Jesus' parting gesture to his disciples, we heard it in the readings of the Mass today, his parting gesture was his blessing. They return then to Jerusalem from the Mount of the Ascension and they stay in the upper room with Mary. And in that scene we see the church in her beginnings, in her infancy, awaiting in prayer the outpouring of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And as they did, so we also await and we pray for that strength which will come to us and will help us to be witnesses to the life, death and resurrection of our Saviour Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honour the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory, our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, a spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Laurence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Amy, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said, the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once. You are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. And for those who are joining us remotely at Mass this morning, a spiritual communion, I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I should just remind you, of course, that tomorrow we begin the Novena in preparation for Pentecost. That's nine days of prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to come once again upon the church and upon us individually with his gifts and his graces. So just a small prayer each day over the next nine days. Come Holy Spirit, we'll do. If you can say something a bit longer, even better. But some little invocation to God the Holy Spirit to inspire us and fill us and keep us now fired up with that faith that Jesus gave to his apostles that he left with his church on the day when he ascended to heaven. And on that note, a very blessed, happy feast day to all of you here and to those who are following us elsewhere, hopefully at Mass this morning. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.